Okay, hello everybody. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about polyatomic ionic compounds. So these are ionic compounds that have polyatomic ions in them. So hopefully at this point, you've got your polyatomic ions memorized because you're going to start using them a lot in this section. So let's take a look at SROH. Here's the formula. What I want you to do is to give me the name. So all we do is we name this SR, which hopefully you know is strontium. Right, we name our cation and then we name our anion. Now, the problem is there's more than two elements in our formula. That right away should give you a clue that we have a polyatomic ion in here. So because you memorize these, you're going to start to recognize OH in your group. And hopefully you remember that OH is called hydroxide. Remember, leave a little bit of a space between the elements so that you can put a Roman numeral if you need it. Strontium hydroxide. I name my cation and my anion. My cation is strontium 2 plus. My anion is OH minus. This whole thing gets that minus charge, so we keep it as a group. Okay, and that's why we have the 2 down here. We don't write that as SRO2H2. It's too hard for people to recognize the OH. You want to be able to see this immediately as you see the formula. So again, if you didn't memorize those polyatomic ions, you're going to have a lot of trouble with this. So strontium hydroxide. Now, one last thing I need to do before I finish is check for strontium. Is it a transition metal? Strontium is right over here. It is not a transition metal. Uh, so therefore, I do not need a stock number. Remember, the exceptions would be tin and lead. Tin and lead do require stock numbers. Strontium is not a transition, me transition metal. And it's not tin and lead. So therefore, no stock number is needed. So therefore, there's my name strontium hydroxide. Let's take a look at another one. Say we have ALNO3 parentheses 3. Name my cation. Aluminum. Okay. Then I look at my anion. My anion is NO3, so therefore NO3 is a nitrate. So therefore, I check again, look at my periodic table. Do I have aluminum? Is it a transition metal? Technically, it's not. Transition metals end right here. There's, there's no, uh, there's a break here. So that is not a transition metal. Aluminum has a three plus charge. Technically, the only metal you're going to really see that has that uh, charge like that, a three plus charge. Okay, so therefore, aluminum does not require a stock number. No stock number needed. All right, let's try another one. Let's say I have copper carbonate. You will see the rules aren't really any different, it's just a matter of remembering the, uh, um, my fault, it's too easy to think of it, let's try it again. CuCO3. So it's the same thing I did before, the only difference is I'm substituting in polyatomic ions here. So, again, name a cation, copper, leave a space, carbonate, how do I know carbonate? Because I memorized my polyatomic ions. And then I look for copper. Now, where is copper on the periodic table? It's right here. It will require a stock number. So we have to go back and figure out what the stock number is. So you should have memorized CO3 along with its charge, because it's CO3 2 minus. Okay? So if I have copper, and I only have one of them, right? There's only one copper here. The three doesn't mean that I have three carbonates. It means that the carbonate has three oxygens within its structure. This is the polyatomic ion. So therefore, if I have three, um, one carbonate and one car copper, it must have a charge of two plus. So I have to have a stock number because it's a transition metal, and the stock number needs to be a two. So copper two carbonate is the name of this compound. Now, don't get it confused with copper one carbonate. This one over here is going to be copper 1. Why copper 1? C-O-P-P-E-R parentheses 1 carbonate. Because it tells us the charge on the ion. It doesn't tell us how many. So therefore my carbonate is 2 minus. The coppers, I have two of them. Remember that's what the number down here tells me. It tells me how many I have. So therefore, each one of those has to have a positive one charge, and that is what the 
Stackenberg tells us. It tells us the charge on the ion, not the number of ions. So it's very, very tricky for students. Okay, one more this way, and then I'm going to show you the other way, the going from the name to the formula. All right, so let's say I have uh, SN. Oh, you know what? No, I think we're good. I'm going to actually do the go back the other way. Let's let's take a look at giving you the name and you writing the formula. Uh, yeah, ammonium bromide. Okay, so I do just like I did with the binary ones. I just write the, the a formula, NH4, remember I have to have that memorized, should have a positive one charge. Bromide is BR. If you forget this one, you can always look it up on the periodic table. Bromide is here, minus one charge. So therefore, minus one. And if I put those together, positive one, minus one, I end up with ammonium bromide. That's it. Now, the question is, do I need parentheses around that ammonium? Technically, no. Some students like to write NH4 parentheses bromide. I guess you could do that if you wanted, but typically we only put the parentheses if there's more than one of those polytomic ions. For example, if I have something like ammonium, and let's say we do ammonium sulfide. Again, it's going to be NH4 plus S2 minus, right? Because ammonium and sulfide. So this time I'm going to need two of these ammoniums, right? Because I have to balance out, I have to put in two of the whole thing. Double those polytemic ions. So therefore, now I'm going to have NH4 but I have to indicate that I have two of them. So that's why I put parentheses here and a two and an S. Ammonium sulfide. And that would be my final formula for this. And here I have to use parentheses. I can't just make that, and do not write this. Don't write two H eight S because it's too hard. You don't, I don't recognize it as ammonium. We all have memorized NH4 as ammonium. So NH2H8, or N2H8 is not ammonium. It's confusing. So stay away from that. Okay. All right, one last one, and I'm going to end it here. This is going to be a tricky one because it's going to have the uh, lead in it. So let's say we have lead. Which one am I writing that the wrong way? Let's write the word lead. Lead. And let's go with lead for oxide. This is the one that a lot of students miss, so be careful and pay attention here, okay? All right, so lead is PB4+. plus. Oxygen is 2... Oh, this doesn't even have polytomic ion. Oh, well, that's okay. All right, so if you want to throw a polytomic ion, I'll do, I'll do one more if you want. All right, so lead 4, iodide, oxygen 2. So we've got to balance these two together. And a lot of students do, a lot of you are using, is this switching of the ions, right? You just take this, put it down here, and you take this, and you put it down here, which is fine, but this is not the right formula. Ionic compounds, because you're balancing charges, must always be in lowest uh, ratio. So therefore, you just have to remember, if you write it like this, to reduce it down to lead with a 2. question is why. Because if I have lead, 4 plus, and oxygen, 2 minus, I only need one more oxygen to balance it, don't I? Right? I don't need to have that extra oxygen and the extra, you know, leads in there. I just need two oxygen and a single lead, and that's what our ionic formulas always represent. Okay? And that one is one of the trickier ones for students. It gets even trickier if you do something like we take do tin, and we say tin Four, and we do something like sulfate, throw a polytemic ion in here. This is like the primo problem here. All right, so I would do tin, four plus, sulfate, which would be SO4, two minus. Okay, so again, if I did this and I switched those charges, students tend to get tin with a sulfate, and I would have a four here. Notice that I put parentheses because I'm putting this down at the bottom for both of these, right? You got to keep that in mind. This is acting as a group. Don't break that down. I personally would rather do it a different way, and I'll show you in a second. SO4 with a 2. 
Okay, shortcut works, but you got to remember to reduce it down to its lowest terms possible. What I would do for this is just notice the charges. 4 plus, 2 minus. I only need a second SO4 2 minus to balance that, don't I? I have 1, 2, so my formula would be SN, and I need 2 sulfates, SO4s. Okay? That's it. That is all the rules for writing ionic compound from binary um, with single charge that are not changing. Those would be your alkali metals, which we saw uh, on the periodic table. So those are your alkali metals. Those are the ones that don't, in alkaline earth metals and aluminums, zinc, cadmium, and silver. No stock numbers are needed. Okay. Then we get the transition metals, which do require stock numbers. So we have those binary compounds, two types, fixed charges, multiple charges. Don't forget about tin and lead. Then we move into the polyatomic ions. Same rules, same things apply, but you just have to have those polyatomic ions memorized. Okay, so I hope that helps, and uh, we'll finish wrapping up all the ionic compound stuff in class, and we'll move on to uh, acids and molecules, and those naming systems are by far a lot more uh, simple and more streamlined. Thanks a lot.